Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is naughty or nice, and the challenge is to incorporate a stocking into a Christmas card. So I've made a stacked double oven card along with a BAM box island, and uh, this has been a requested card, so I made sure that I incorporated a stocking so that it would work for this month's challenge. For a card, I am starting with a piece of cardstock, 5 inches by 12 inches, scored in the center for folding. And then to that, I've added some pattern papers, 4 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters. And I just picked something that would be a good floor and something that would be a good wallpaper. I'm going to be combining pieces from the oven pop-up set and the oven extra set. However, I'm going to need to cut some pieces with my trimmer because I'm making the modification of stacking it double high. I chose white cabinets, so I have a piece of white cardstock, four and a half inches tall, and then it needs to be at least eight and a half inches long. It does not have to go all the way out to 12. I just happen to start from 12 by 12 cardstock. My first cut is going to be at a half an inch to make a crown molding for the top of my cabinets, but it's going to be much easier to score it first. So I've scored it at a quarter of an inch and then one tick over at three eighths of an inch. So I've got my two score lines in the piece. And now I can put that in my trimmer and cut it at half an inch. It would be much more difficult to do that scoring if I had already cut it into a half an inch strip. Okay, what's going to make it look a little bit more like crown molding would be to have a mitered end. So I'm just going to cut, just kind of eye it with my scissors and cut a triangle off of one side. I can use that triangle as a guide to get about the same angle on the other side. Just holding that in place and then cutting against the triangle. Okay, so my crown molding is ready for the card and I'll just set that aside. My next cut on my strip will be at two inches and that is for the island. Okay, the island gets scored at one and seven eighths of an inch from each end. For me, the easiest is just to measure one and seven eighths, then take the whole strip, flip it around in the scoring board and use one and seven eighths of an inch again. Now my scoring tool slipped a little bit, but I'll just use that side as the back of the island. What I should end up with is three quarters of an inch between the two score lines in the center, and that is the width of the BAM box once we assemble it. My next trimmer cut is going to be at one and a sixteenth of an inch. So that's just a baby tick past one inch. When I cut it, I'll have a piece that's four and a half inches long, but I need that to be four inches. So I'm going to turn it in the trimmer, cut it to four inches. That piece will be the top of the cabinets. Next, I need two one inch strips. So these are going to be the side cabinets. There is a die in the oven set that will cut the side cabinets, but it's only as tall as one oven. So we need to be able to extend that. So the length on those two one inch strips is going to be three and five eighths of an inch. Okay, and then from my left to over white cardstock, I'm going to cut two pieces that are two and a half inches by inch and a half. These pieces will go against the back wall inside the oven so that the ovens don't have wallpaper inside. I decided on festive green ovens. So I've used the oven pop-up die set, I've cut an oven, and then I've put enough green cardstock to cover just the oven door. And now all I need to do is find the score line in the door and cut across with my scissors so that I'm left with just a door piece that can be glued to the inside of the full piece with something sandwiched between it. So that could be vellum if I wanted it to be frosted glass, or it could just be a thin transparency if I want it to be clear. Now I just need to add some glue around the opening and attach that piece of transparency to it. Now I'm using liquid glue for this. I like Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. With transparencies, it may be better to use a thin tape if you have one, it'll be a more instantaneous bond. But with the liquid glue, it will set up eventually working the fold at the base of the oven door so that the oven door is open, then I can have access to be able to add my glue all over the back of the oven door and then place that one that has the transparency in it to the glue and just making sure that all the corners line up perfectly. Then I repeat that process with the second oven. And then since I did use liquid glue with a transparency, I wanted to give it a second for everything to set up and so I grabbed my quilting clips and just clipped everything together. But if I had it to do over again, I would have used chip clips because the quilting clips do leave little divots in the piece. And I kind of forgot about that when I grabbed those clips. The pop-up base for the oven has folds in it and they all fold to the back like mountain folds. 
Now I happen to choose a cardstock that's a little heavier and so I'm going to use a bone folder to reinforce those folds, but every single one of them folds to the back. What I find is it's often easier to fold towards myself first and then reverse it. So I will do that and then just reinforce everything with a bone folder. So here's the piece when it's been folded. It's now ready for the card, but I have some other work that I'm going to do first on the ovens and the cabinets. There is a die in the oven set that cuts the side cabinets along with the top of the counters. And so I've cut those out of white. And this is what I was talking about, that they're not long enough for a double oven. They're just really the length of a single oven. So now what I'm going to do is just use those one inch strips that I cut to extend the height of the cabinet area. And I'm gluing my own strips over the long portion of the die cut piece. So I'm basically starting at the fold and then just making sure the sides line up perfectly to turn that into that long version. The cabinet door comes included in the oven extras and the drawer fronts come in the oven pop-up. And so I decided to do a combination of both. So I put a cabinet door at the top and then three drawers at the bottom. Then I'm also going to add two cabinet doors to the island. In the oven pop-up set, there's also a die that will cut six small circles to use as knobs. I have cut enough to be able to put knobs on all the drawer fronts and the cabinets. Okay, here's where I figure out that my quilting clips left some pretty good divots in my cardstock, and I had to decide if I was actually going to start over or just try and work those out, and I just decided to use a bone folder and kind of work out the divots. Some of them are going to be hidden behind where the, the oven handle goes anyway, so I decided just to live with it. The clips I should have used were chip clips because they don't have anything that will create a divot. When I die cut the oven handles out of the silver cardstock, I put a scrap piece of cardstock underneath it during die cutting, and that really helps me see the score lines in that piece. Basically, I want the score lines on either end to become a zigzag. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my bone folder on the inside of the center that will kind of curve it like this. And then it's those two outside areas that get glued to the oven. So I'm just gonna add my glue wherever I want my oven handle to go, just out on the ends and then the oven handle should line up with the edge of the oven door on both sides. I don't normally use ink on the edges of the oven doors, but I am this time because I do have those little flaws in the paper and the ink will help disguise it. The die has scored just above the oven door right here all the way across the piece, and that's what turns the top of the stove down. So I fold towards myself first and then reverse it. Then there is a fold back here that normally would fold upward to hold the knobs of the stove, but instead I'm going to fold it downward for a double oven. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the other oven. So the fold line that's just above the oven door is a mountain fold. I'm gonna to fold towards myself first and then reverse it. And then the one in the back again, fold towards myself and then reverse it. Okay, time to connect these two ovens to each other. So I'm going to use the area that's above the oven door opening, but below the fold. So just that skinny area above the oven door is where the second one will attach. And I just want to make sure that the sides are lined up and that the base of the upper oven doesn't drop down into the opening on the bottom one because I don't want it to impede the door closing on the bottom. Okay, so once those are connected together, the side view looks like this. Okay, flattening out the base for my oven, I'm going to add adhesive all over the upper tab. And then where that's going to connect is to the wall side of the fold. So I'm gonna turn my card and lift up the floor so that I don't cross the fold with that tab. And then I'm just going to butt it right up to the fold and I'm looking to center it in the card. So I'm not measuring, but I'm just kind of taking an eyeball and saying, well, does that look like the approximate center of that card? Okay, so now I'm going to attach the tabs on the other side. And to do that, I need to find the closed position. So the closed position is not when just one tab is forward, but when both sections are folded forward on all three. So it should be the tabs themselves plus the next panel are all folded forward. And I just wanna make sure that those all look nice and straight and lined up next to each other. Cause this would be the time to kind of, you know, mess with the folds a little bit if something looked crooked. 
And then once I've got everything nice and straight, I'm going to add my adhesive to those tapered tabs. So there's three tapered tabs, adding my adhesive to that. And for some reason, getting off of my tabs and all over the interior, that's not good. Okay, there we go. We've got glue on the three tabs. And then what I want to do now is keep that nice and flat on the wall side of the card while I close the floor against that exposed adhesive and then just give it a good press. Okay, careful opening. Oh, not enough time. Hang on, let me just press that again. So with glue, you've gotta be patient and give it a second to set up. And then I like to open real slowly. I'll put my thumbs against the fold so that I'm helping it open that first time. And then I like to just keep going to where I can give those tabs a good press in the open position as well so that they're really nicely adhered to the floor. Now it's ready to attach the ovens. So what I'm going to do with that is attach the base of the oven to that center section of the pop-up, but I'll do that in the flat position. So I'm going to lay the oven set down flat in front of the pop-up base and then fold down all the tabs so that it is nice and flat. Okay, the adhesive is going to go on the rounded tabs for the back of the oven and then just right along the base. And then what I can do is also add a line of glue along the top of the pop-up section. And that way that oven will attach nicely to the front of that pop-up. So now I'm going to slide it up until it's touching the base. I'm looking to make sure everything looks nice and straight and I'm going to close the wall side of the card against that exposed adhesive. So it's gonna attach it in three locations. So once again, giving that a second to set up and then carefully opening it that first time, you can see that the back two tabs have attached to the wall and the base is attached to the front of the pop-up. And everything looks like it's adhered nicely. And then I've got my stacked double oven. My oven doors will open using those handles. Those inch and a half by two and a half inch pieces of white cardstock that I cut earlier are what's going to be used to change the back of the oven from the wallpaper color to, in my case, white. Now, I could have made that green if I wanted it to match the rest of the oven or whatever color I wanted to. Maybe it's going to be a dark gray. I just decided on white so that it would be kind of bright inside the oven. So I'm just going to slide that in, line it up with the bottom, you know, so that there's no wallpaper visible when you open the oven door. Okay, the next thing to go on is the side cabinets. So for those, I am going to use those little protruding tabs on the top of the second oven to attach those cabinets to them. So the adhesive goes on the tab, and then I use the corner of the fold to just butt it right up to the edge of the tab. And then I can kind of use the the back wall and the side of the oven to make sure that the cabinet looks straight. And then once I've got it attached there, you can see that's where the corners lined up and then it just should be straight along there. And then what I wanna do is attach the base of the cabinets to the toe kick at the bottom. So if I lift up my cabinets and add a little glue to the toe kick, then my favorite thing is to do this at 90 degrees. So I have my card open to 90 degrees and I press the cabinets down into that toe kick and then I hold it while I carefully close the floor side so that I can give it a good press. And if it's not fully adhered, then I just may need to repeat that process. But then once I got it to stick, then I have that side cabinet done, and then I'll do the other side. So once again, the adhesive goes on that tab. I take the corner of the fold, and I just butt it right up to the tab, and I use the side of the oven and the back wall to make sure that everything looks straight. I add glue to the top of the toe kick and then press that into the glue. Once it starts to set up, then I can carefully close the floor side of the card and give it a really good press. I have two ovens to fill. The first thing I'll add is an oven rack. In each oven, that die comes included in the oven pop-up. And then what I've done for the upper oven is I've made a tray of cookies. So the cookie sheet and the little cookies themselves come in the oven pop-up. I'm going to glue a tray of cookies in the upper, upper oven. And then for the lower oven, I'm going to use the turkey out of the oven extras set. Now there is a pop-up that can be put inside the oven to have that animated away from the back wall. I decided there was plenty going on in this card without adding more complexity to it. 
So for my card, I am just going to glue that turkey to the back wall. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add the crown molding. Now, because the ovens stick out a little further than the cabinetry, I only want the glue at the top of the oven. And then I'm just going to center the crown molding and attach it to the front of the oven. Okay, so now that is attached. I can just check it and make sure everything's folding down nicely and staying within the card. And then up here at the top, I've got a little bit of a color mismatch because I've got white, green, white, and I want it to have that built-in look. So that's what that one and a 16th by four inch piece of white cardstock was for. I can use that across the top and it'll give it that built-in look. I'm using the BAM box pop-up to make a rubber band pop-up to animate the island. So I've die cut one of the BAM boxes. And then what I'm going to do is work the folds. So the first three folds are mountain folds. So I'm just breaking the fold by folding it towards myself, but then reversing it and going the other direction. So mountain, mountain, mountain. Then the next fold is a valley fold. That's the only valley fold in the piece. And the final two are mountains. So what I've got here, if I look at it from the side, is I've got mountain, 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 valley, mountain, mountain. And the valley fold should be sealed shut. So I'm going to take my glue and go in there into that valley and then just seal it shut and that'll bring those holes together. Okay, my favorite size rubber band is the number eight Firm Stretch Alliance rubber bands. Now we do sell those in a little baggie on our website. I'll put the link in the description box below. So I just wanna get it around that shelf and into those holes. So there's my little small rubber band. Okay, making sure the crescent is at the top, that crescent right there, I'm gonna take this shelf and I'm just gonna butt it up below the crescent. So I'm essentially just holding it kind of up below the crescent while I stretch the rubber band up and over and into those two holes. So from the side, you can see it's a triangle. The rubber band is stretched up and into the crescent holes. And then now I can put the crescent back where it started. So that cut is only for rubber band access. And once the rubber band is in, then you just treat it like a, a solid side, adding the adhesive everywhere and then bringing the other side of the box over and into that adhesive. And I just like to stick my finger inside the BAM box so I can give it a good press. Now you can only collapse a BAM box by pressing the corners that are over air. So not the ones that have the shelf going through. Those sides, it's solid, you can't collapse it, but you can, you can collapse it by pressing the other sides. I want the island to collapse to the back in the closed position. So I wanna make sure that I have the side that has the holes that are closer to the outside. That's gonna be the base front of my BAM box so that I know it can collapse to the back when, once the island is attached. So I want the front face of the island to attach to that front of the BAM box. So I'll add my adhesive all over the BAM box and then I'm just gonna get the island pressed into that glue so that the base of the island is right at the base of the BAM box. And then the back of the island is going to come to the floor on the back side of the BAM box. So once again, I just add my adhesive all over the BAM box itself. And then now I can do this in the closed position because I can press the BAM box down and then press the island over and into that adhesive. And that way I know it's going to fold flat as well. For a countertop on the island, I'm going to use green cardstock that I've cut to two and three quarters inch long by an inch and a half tall, and I'm just going to round those corners. Then I add adhesive all over the top of the island and then just center the countertop into that adhesive. On top of the island, I will add another sheet of cookies and the spatula that comes included in the oven pop-up set. My finished island is now ready to go inside the card and I wanna do that by flattening the island so that I place it in a location where it can collapse down in front of the ovens but not jammed right up to them. So just a little bit away from the oven, I'll make a mark on my card so that I know, again, where that BAM box is supposed to be attached. And then I just need a strong adhesive on the base of the BAM box, get in there in the flat position, you know, so I can make sure that it's straight and just bring it right there to my pencil line a little bit over so I don't have to erase anything. And then it should, the weight of the oven should hold it closed. You won't need a closure with this card because there's enough weight with the double oven to keep the BAM box island closed. 
Okay, I glued an oven mitt to each of the oven doors. That oven mitt comes included in the oven set. And then for stockings and the greenery, I got those out of our Fireplace Extras 1 set. So since this is a stocking challenge, I wanted to go find some small stockings that I could glue to the cabinets. The greenery out of that same set will work perfectly across the top of the crown molding. And then as a place to write a personal greeting, I'm going to layer two of the labels that come included in the band box pop up together and then just glue them in this bottom right corner of the card. To fill in the wall space above the double oven, I've cut the base for the peppermint border out of the Christmas Borders 1, added pop dots behind it, and then instead of adding the peppermint overlays, I just used cookies, heart and star cookies, to decorate each one of those circles. And then I'm just gonna basically use that kind of just as a holiday garland that might be on the wall. So instead of peppermints, just using it a little differently. Since it is a stocking challenge, I used the stocking out of our stocking pop-up for the front decoration and then filled it with baking charms. And then along the bottom is the gingerbread man border from that same border set, Christmas Borders 1. And now all I need to do is just add my glue and attach that to the front of the card. As for the back of the card, typically I would not decorate it, but once I've added that heavy front plus the oven, I'm always afraid that the card's going to like fall on its back because the front is so much heavier weight than the floor. So just to balance that weight, I like to just add another piece of cardstock to the back. That's not even the same red because I just went to my scrap bin and just grabbed a piece of red and cut it to be just a slight bit smaller than the card so I don't have to line it up as perfectly. And it really does balance the card nicely so that it displays without falling backwards. If you wanted to mail this card, I would suggest an A7 envelope, which is an envelope for a 5x7 card. This card is 5x6, but it's got some thickness to it, so that A7 envelope will be just perfect. So this is just a fun alteration of the oven pop-up where you can stack it and get that double oven look. So you know me, I'm always just trying to find new things that we can do with the dies. And wouldn't that be a fun card to send to somebody, especially someone who loves to cook? So this technique was first done in my November 2023 Zoom class. So we did the double oven card. And in general, if I do some kind of fancy technique in a Zoom class, then as time permits, I will try to get a similar card put onto YouTube. And so in this case, the stocking challenge actually ended up being perfect for me to be able to do the double stacked oven as this month's designer challenge card. If you are interested in our Zoom classes, definitely check out our events page on the website. If you check the description box below this YouTube video, you will find supply links for what I used on my card as well as a link to the blog post. And on the blog post is where you will find all of the photos and links to the wonderful stocking inspiration by our talented design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.